Come in. Welcome. This is E.G. Marshall. And you're welcome in my world where things are even stranger than they seem. And reality falls before truth. We've all heard that one picture is worth a thousand words. But is this really true? A quick example. Would your sweetheart rather hear you say, I love you? Or look at your picture. But pictures have their place, as millions of camera fans all over the world will tell you. Listen as we hear about a strange and dangerous camera which brought tragedy to those who owned it. No! No, please don't hit me again. I told you I don't know it. Oh, no! There's no sense in you hitting me and hitting me. I don't know the combination. Please! I don't care about the camera. I really don't. I would tell you if I could, but Johnny changed the combination on the safe because he knows how I felt about it. (laughs) Our mystery drama, Die, You're on Magic Camera, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Murray Burnett and stars Nick Pryor and Terry Keene. How do you feel when your host or hostess pulls out the old family album for a quiet evening looking over family snapshots? Some people find this enjoyable. Johnny Carlin loved picture taking. At the time our story opens, Johnny had attained a cherished ambition. He was a proud owner of a brand new Volecta S60, a magnificent camera, and the very last word in self-developing photography. To add to his happiness, he was taking the very first picture on the Volecta of his beautiful and bubbly girl, Lisa Kane. Uh, move to your left, Lisa. If you can sort of lean against the pillar of the bank there. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Hold it. Good. I can't wait to see it. Neither can I. What happens now? You just push this button and wait for the picture to develop. Seems like a miracle. It's a brilliant piece of scientific work. Someday I'll explain how it works. Now, we open this back, and here's your picture. But, well, how strange. It, it, is that the picture you took? It, it sure isn't. Wait a minute. I, I can't figure out what happened. Look how clear the inside of the bank is. Is that a hold-up going on? Well, yeah, it looks like it. But there hasn't been a hold-up. Look, everything's normal. Yeah, I, I can see it is, but the, the camera doesn't lie. There are three guys with guns and people lying on the floor. This is crazy. <laughs> I don't know what I did about breakfast before I met you, Lisa. You had coffee and Danish and some greasy spoons. <laughs> Remind me to chalk up another reason for us to get married. It'll be more convenient for me to have you in my kitchen than for me to come over to your place every morning. <laughs> I'll remind you. Hey. Hey, Lisa, look at this. Intercoastal trust held up by three bandits who escaped with $30,000 in cash and negotiable securities. Johnny, isn't that the... That's the bank where we stood when I took that picture. What does it mean? Hand me my camera. Here. It beats me that this is a perfectly ordinary Volecta. Well, could, could, could it have been just a freak thing? Some kind of a, a crazy mix-up? You tell me how this camera could take a picture of a hold-up in a bank that hadn't happened yet. Can you explain that? No. Why don't we just forget about it? Because there's a reward for information leading to the capture of the robbers. You think the picture we have shows the actual robbers? Well, it's worth a try. Inspector Barrett, what do you got in Can I help you? 
Uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm calling about the intercoastal bank robbery yesterday. Uh, I think I have something that'll help. Thank you for calling. What do you have? Well, I, I, I can't tell it over the phone. Why not? Because it's a photograph. A photograph? Yeah, I, I was taking a picture of my girl outside the intercoastal bank yesterday, and, and uh, somehow I, I got a picture of the holdup. Where are you now? My office is 1 Central Park South. I'll be there in an hour. The name is uh, Carlin Communications. I'm John Carlin. See you in an hour, Mr. Carlin, and thanks. You didn't say anything about the reward. There's time for that when I get him in the office. You expect anyone? No. Uh, you'll forgive me, but the door was open. What? That, that's impossible. I always double lock that door. We're all forgetful at times. You're John Carlin. Who are you? My card. Electric Camera Corporation, Nicholas Scarlett, sales representative. Yes, Mr. Scarlett? I'll come straight to the point, Mr. Carlin. Our records show that you purchased a Volecta S60 on the 27th of this month. Correct? That's right. Well, it was our mistake. No question about it. A very grave error. That model was sold to you by some stupid clerk. It is an experimental camera that should not be on the market. So, since it was our error, we are going to give you your choice of any two Volecta cameras you wish, including our motion picture line, when you return the experimental model. Fair? What kind of experiments were you doing with this model? Not my department, Johnny. I'm just here to get the camera back. Well, suppose I want to keep the camera. Why would you want to do that? Suppose I did. Bad move, Johnny. I wouldn't advise it. You mean there's a chance that the Valecta people might try to grab it sometime? Rip me off? Oh, never. You paid for the camera. It's yours unless you return it voluntarily. That's the rule of the company, and that's the way it works. Now, what do you say? Do we have a deal? I'd like to think it over. Oh, sure thing, sure thing. But believe me, Johnny, this camera wasn't meant for you. And whatever you're thinking, it won't work out. When did you take this shot, Mr. Carlin? Well, I don't remember the exact time, Inspector, but it must have been during the robbery. Hmm. Well, when else could it have been? I don't know. But maybe you can explain how it is that the faces of the hold-up men are so sharp and clear. Well, the Belecta S60 is a marvelous camera. Yeah, it must be, since the bank camera shows that the men were wearing stocking masks. Johnny, I don't know what you're trying to prove, but I've got to get out of this hotel lobby. You can't figure it out. It just doesn't make sense. Every single one of these pictures came out just the way I took them. Well, why shouldn't they? Well, how do you explain that picture in front of the bank? I told you, it, it was a freak. That's all. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, maybe you're right. There's a phone over there. You sit in this chair while I call Scarlett and tell him I'm ready to make the deal. Okay, but make it fast. One minute. Mr. Scarlett, please. Who? Mr. Nicholas Scarlett, sales representative. Oh, I'm sorry, but we have no Mr. Scarlett here. No, you must have. I have his card right here. It says Nicholas Scarlett. I'm sorry, sir. There's no Mr. Scarlett working for us. Is it all set? Can we go now? Valecta never heard of Nicholas Scarlett. He doesn't work for them. What? Well, that's impossible. He offered you... He's a phony. He just wants the camera. I've got to figure this thing out from every angle. Johnny, I'm tired and I'm hungry. I just want to get out of this hotel. Okay. On our way out, I just want to take one more shot. Johnny, that's an empty passenger elevator. I can see that. Okay, there. Now let's go. We'll look at what comes out in the restaurant. <laughs> I never would have believed a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich could taste this good. Look, Lisa, look at this shot. 
What, the empty elevator? It isn't empty on this picture. Look. Johnny. What? Johnny, I'm frightened. Lisa, you've got to help me find the girl in the picture. Johnny, I want you to throw that camera in the river. And just forget about what's going to happen to that girl in the picture with the knife at her throat? How do we know it hasn't happened already? Honey, I've been through that with you. The first picture showed a robbery that was going to happen, and it did. Now we have a girl and a man in a hotel elevator, and the guy has a knife at her throat. We might be able to stop that from happening. Oh, we don't even know who she is. She's, she's, she's probably a guest at the hotel. One of the desk clerks should recognize her picture if you show it to her. This picture? I can't show them that. No, of course not. But I can crop it so that the man with the knife Johnny, is Johnny, it's no use. I don't want to go around asking about a girl I don't know. I don't want anything to do with that camera. I just want you to get rid of it. Lisa... Do you want to throw away a million dollars? Johnny, you sound like a stranger. I don't even know you. Why do you talk about a million dollars? What's this picture got to do don't with... do you see the possibilities that exist with this camera? I can predict when a crime will occur. I can also show the face of the criminal. Now, will you think of what a private detective agency could do with something like that? But how would you explain it? I don't have to explain anything. I don't know. I just have a bad feeling about the whole thing. She's right, John. Uh, Listen to what she's saying. Mr. Scarlett, where did you come from? Well, I have here the two cameras that the Velecta Company promised you in return for the experimental model. You don't work for Velecta. I checked. They never heard of you. That's of no importance. No? Well, what is? That you return the camera to me. The way I figure it is, you just want that camera for yourself. I don't buy that story about the camera being an experimental model. Oh, really? No. Uh, then what do you think it is? Well, it... Ah, yes? Well, what difference does it make? It's mine. (laughs) Unfortunately. Look, I've had about enough of you, Mr. Scarlett. Now, we have work to do, and if you'll excuse me... Uh, You'll find what you're interested in in this newspaper on page three. Unknown assailant stabs girl in hotel elevator. Johnny, that's... that's tomorrow's paper. Oh, just an early edition. It will be on the streets in two hours. At any rate, you're too late to help Miss Stearns. Uh, But to ease your conscience, she wasn't seriously injured and should be out of the hospital in a day or two. What hospital? It doesn't say here. And how do you know so much? Oh, you know, it's always embarrassing when we're forced into this position, especially in this atomic computer age, but I see there's no help for it. Now, through an error, a piece of equipment used by my organization has come into your possession. I don't think it's necessary to explain that this shouldn't be in the hands of any mortal. Hold it. Hold it right there. You said mortal. Are you trying to tell me that you're not a human being? Johnny, be careful. Ah, come off it, Lisa. Now look, Scarlett, if you're the devil and you want my camera, you'd have no problem in getting it. You wouldn't be here asking for a swap, practically begging me to give it to you. Ordinarily, you'd be right. But there are unalterable rules which govern my organization, and one of them is that when a mortal makes a legitimate purchase from us, we're bound to a bargain. We can only ask that he return his purchase of his own free will. Now that I've revealed this much to you, I suggest that you take the... Uh Uh-uh. No deal, Nick. Or whatever your name is. You made a bargain, and you're stuck. May I make one correction? It is not I, Johnny, who is stuck, but you, who are doomed. I don't suppose there's one of us who hasn't thought of what they'd say or ask if they really had a conversation with the devil. You know, I like to believe that most of us have at one time or another, but that we somehow either didn't recognize him or didn't believe him.
When a man looks back on his life, it's easy for him to pick out the mistakes he made. Where, if he had done things differently, his life would have been better. However, man is always the victim of his desires. And in today's world, the desire for wealth can blind. Johnny Carlin had become the owner of a strange camera. A camera which seemed to be able to take pictures of the future. And Johnny Carlin had visions of untold wealth. He had also been warned. But greed has its own way of muffling warnings. I hate all of this. I wish you'd give it up, Johnny. I can't stand all this lying and maneuvering with people who are calling for help. Who's lying? We can deliver. Lisa, all we have to do is tell them that we have to take a picture. That's all. But there have been dozens of calls from people who have been ripped off or mugged and want us to find the criminal. Simple. We tell them we can't help them. This is the Carlin Crime Prevention Agency. We can forestall a crime. We can't solve it. You don't have to do anything except tell them the truth. All right? Now, what have we got today? You must be kidding. Here, look. You're just a few of the latest messages. Uh-huh. Banks? Hey, these are good. Banks will be regular customers when we get set up properly. Uh, nothing, nothing. Hey. Andrea Scudder. Well, <laughs> what do you know? You know her? Well, the same way you do. Heiress to the Scudder Millions, beauty, playgirl, athlete, and all-around hellraiser. She said she wanted to talk to you about a personal problem. Uh-huh. Andrea Scudder. That's money. Call her and make the appointment. Mr. Carlin, I'm being blackmailed. I don't know by whom. Can you find out... Well, I can try, Miss Scudder. If I don't succeed, there'll be no fee. And if you do, there'll be no publicity. I don't want my name spread all over the front pages. You have my word. Fine. The job is worth $50,000. Is that satisfactory? Uh, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's okay. Uh, uh, I'd like a little more information. Such as? Well, what happens when and if I deliver the name of the blackmailer to you? You get my check, my thanks, and my farewell. I'll take it from there. Uh, not satisfactory. What? Uh, look at it from my point of view, Miss Scudder. You ask me to get you a name and then walk away? Now, obviously, you, uh, you have some plans for this blackmailer. Probably for getting rid of him. That is none of your business. Uh, granted, but if you intend to, uh, uh, hire someone to take care of your problem with him then that can't be done very quietly, and I might get involved. Mr. Carlin, let's put it this way. I am not a killer, nor do I intend to become one. This blackmailer must be someone in my circle of friends. You will have to take my word for that, because the information that he holds over my head... Uh, Miss Scudder, excuse me, you keep saying he. Why? Because it's a man's voice disguised that talks to me over the telephone. But the blackmailer could conceivably be a woman. It's possible. But it would still be one of my group. Okay. Now, the only request that I make of you is that you allow me to take your picture. My picture? Just a snapshot. Well, I don't see what that uh, is. Well, that's, that's the way I work. I, uh, I get strong impressions from a picture. Uh, uh, emanations. Call it whatever you want. It works. <laughs> All right. How do you want me to pose? I don't have my camera with me, uh... You see, I wasn't sure that I would take your case. Could you come to my office tomorrow at your convenience? A uh, full face, if you please. Whatever you say. Thank you. Uh, that, that's it? That's it. Thank you for coming to the office. Well, what happens now? Well, I'll study the picture and hopefully get some vibrations which will enable me to name the blackmailer. How long do you think it will take? Not long. I may be in touch with you this afternoon. All my instinct tells me that this was a waste of time. But if it doesn't work, it'll cost me nothing. Exactly, Miss Scudder. See you later. I hope. You will, Miss Scudder. You certainly will. Lisa? Yes? 
She's gone. Come on. We'll see what the picture looks like. I don't know what you expect to come out of this. <laughs> what is it? She said she wouldn't. She said she wasn't a killer. Who's the man? I've never seen him before. But from the looks of this picture, she's pumping a few bullets into the blackmailer. <laughs> Are you sure you know what you're going to tell her? I'm not going to tell her anything. Hand me the scissors. Here. All right. There. Now, all we have is a picture of the blackmailer. I'll take this up to her and say, here's the man who's been blackmailing you. Give me a check for $50,000, please. Johnny, she looked a lot older in this picture. Well, he isn't too young either. I want you to promise me something. When and if you get the million, you'll forget about the camera and throw it away. Lisa, Johnny, that... please promise. Okay. If that will make you happy, okay. Come in, Mr. Carlin. I must say you look fast. The uh, picture did the trick. Yes. And you have a name. No. But I have his picture. His picture? Here it is. You can probably put a name to it. If, if this is your idea of a joke, Mr. Collin, I am not amused. But I, I, I don't understand. Something must Get have out. gone wrong. Now, now, wait I a minute. I meant what I said, Mr. And Collin. And I have something to say to you, Miss Scudder. You ask my help in locating a blackmailer. Now, I came up with this picture, and it's obviously upset you. I, I, I don't know who the man in the picture the is. The man in I... the picture is Tracy Kingsford, my fiancé. Your fiancé? Exactly. And I know he isn't the blackmailer because he could and will have half of everything I have when we marry next month. But... Now, I don't know what your purpose was in showing me this picture, or even how you got it, but... This picture of Tracy... He isn't this old. Where did you get this? Well, m m m maybe it isn't It isn't your fiancé. Don't be ridiculous. Where did you get it? Well, I'm, I'm afraid that's confidential. I want to know why you thought Tracy was the black man. I told you. I, made I will pay for the information. What is your price? If, if I decide to tell you, it won't cost you a penny. But I, I, I'll have to think it over. What are you going to do, Johnny? I honestly don't know. I, I've i learned one thing, though, about this camera. Yes, so have I. It's best to use it with places or, or institutions like banks or jewelry stores rather than with people. It's wrong for you to have it and even worse for you to try to use now, it. Now, Lisa, it can't do me any harm. If I learn to use it properly, I... I won't get into anything like the Scudder situation. You still haven't decided what to do about that. Yeah. Yeah, I have. I'm, I'm just going to forget it. Forget it? How do you forget something like that? A very good question, Miss Kane. You're, you're after the camera again, aren't you, Scarlett? Of course. I should think by this time you'd be convinced that it isn't for mortals. Uh, right. You have to say that, huh? Well, that doesn't make it a lie. But it makes it suspect. I can take whatever you say with a grain of salt. Well, let's get back to Miss Scudder. You know that she's going to kill her husband. And you're going to let her. Can you live with that knowledge? Well, can, can, can I stop her? You can try. Okay. Tell me how. You can tell her the truth. Ah, that would be interesting. Tell me, Miss Kane. Suppose someone came in here and told you that you were going to kill Johnny. After you're married, would you believe him? Well, w would you? N no. Johnny, you could, you could put the picture back together and, and show her the picture. Show her shooting him. Yeah, but she'll ask me how I got the picture. You're getting to be good at lying. You'll tell her you have this gift of... Uh, prophecy? Yes. That somehow when you, you take pictures of people, it shows the future somehow. That you've only recently discovered the gift. You could tell her that. Oh, 
interesting. Look, we don't need you here. You don't know how wrong you are. Why don't you just give up? I'm not going to give you the camera. Oh. That's final? You can bank on it. All right, all right. Then I'll ask you for a favor, and I give you my word. You won't regret it. Yeah. Well, what is it? Permit me to take one picture. What for? As a favor. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No deal. Once you get your hands on the camera... Johnny, I give you my solemn promise that I will take only one picture and immediately return the camera to you. Well, why should I believe you? Because I've already told you that I can only get the camera from you if you give it to me. I cannot trick you. Johnny, please, let him. Well, all right. So long as it's clearly understood that you're only taking one picture. Understood. All right. Lisa, get the camera. Right away. Uh, wait a minute. What picture are you going to take? Uh, uh, uh That wasn't part of our bargain. The only right you have, Johnny, is to keep the camera and destroy yourself. That right has been granted to you. Here's the camera, Mr. Scarlett. Thank you. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. Not so fast. I told him... Thank you. And here's your camera, Johnny. Well, what about the picture? You just snapped something at random. Oh, the picture, Johnny. The picture is mine. I hope that I will not have to show it to you. I told you, I don't know. No. Oh, please, there's no sense that you're hitting me. I don't know the combination. Mm. I don't care about the camera. I don't. I would tell you if I could, but he changed the combination to the safe because he knows how I feel. Hello? John Carlin? Speaking. Oh, oh, yeah, Inspector. Uh, you know a girl named Lisa Kane? <laughs> well, of course. She's my fiance, and uh, she also works with me. Well, forgive me, but uh, I've been through this before. I've got the kind of news that can't be broken gently. What is it? Something happened to Lisa? She was beaten up badly. She's in the emergency clinic at City Hospital, and she's asking for you. <laughs> his blooming lyre and regaled Grecian nobles with the stories of Greek gods and men which have become part of our Western heritage. Man has sought to pierce the veil of the future. And ever since those days, from Cassandra on, man has consistently ignored the words of prophecy, no matter from where they came. Now, Johnny Carlin has been given more than a warning. Whether he heeds it or not, We'll find out. Black magic from a black box. A seemingly ordinary camera purchased by Johnny Carlin has turned out to be anything but ordinary. In fact, it has the capability of depicting future crimes which will be committed by or against the people photographed. The camera has brought Johnny a lot of money, a lot of notoriety, and a lot of trouble. Lisa Kane, his fiancée, is in the emergency clinic of City Hospital because she has been brutally beaten. You got here fast, Carlin. Where is she, Inspector? One of the rooms down the hall. She's been asking for you. All right, let's go. Any idea why she was picked on? No, wasn't it an ordinary mugging? Hardly. She was attacked in your office. And nothing was taken from her purse. Johnny. Johnny, I want... I want Johnny. I'm here, Lisa. I'm right here. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, they wanted the camera. They knew it. They knew it was a mistake. Now, don't try to talk oh, now. Please, let me. I, w I want to tell you... Did you see their faces, Miss Kane? Yes. You think you could recognize them if I showed you some pictures? In Inspector, look, I don't think she's in any Johnny, shape. Johnny, get rid of the camera. 
Get rid of the camera. Is this the same camera that took the pictures that nabbed the men who robbed the Intercoastal Bank? Inspector, look, you can tell she's in pain. Doctors say she's going to be all right. Now, what about the camera? Well, this isn't the time or the place. This is the time. You want to find another place? It's okay with me. That's good coffee. Another cup, Inspector? Forget the coffee. Give me some facts. Look, I told you everything I could. Uh Uh-uh. The camera. Now, what's with the camera? It's it's one of the new Velectas. You've seen them. Sure, they all take pictures of masked stick-up guys and show their faces, right? Look, Inspector, I can't explain how that happened. I'm going to but... level with you, Carlin, and then you better level with me. Look, Inspector, are you threatening me? I didn't press you about it before because you did me a favor. I got a lot of brownie points for bringing in those bank robbers. But now the heat's on me again. New commissioner is throwing his weight around. And I'm looking for something that'll help me score with him. Well, I'm afraid you're looking in the wrong direction. Well, let me see the camera. I've told you. I know what you told me. And I know you haven't leveled with me. Two guys don't beat up a girl looking for a combination to a safe that holds nothing but a camera. Unless they want that particular camera awfully bad. Inspector, that's pure speculation. Now, they, they, they may have thought there was a lot of cash in the safe. The girl says all they wanted was the camera. Inspector, she's like you. She's got a thing about it. Well, I sure have. Take a guy named Johnny Carlin in the communications business. He buys a camera, and all of a sudden he's in the crime prevention business and doing very well. How come, Carlin? I discovered I had a special talent. Yeah, I checked with some of your satisfied clients. They tell me you use ESP. Yeah, that's right. And the camera. Yeah, that's right again. But I don't buy it. Well, I'm not trying to sell it to you. Yes, you are, Colin. You're trying to sell me a phony story. Now, I want that camera you use for your ESP bit. It seems to me that you're a lot more interested in the camera than you are in getting the guys who beat up Lisa. I haven't heard you screaming at me to find them. If I thought that would do any good, you'd hear me on the moon. Meaning? Meaning that I think we'll get those guys one way or another. You think you have a way? Maybe. Something to do with a camera. You have your methods, I have mine. If I come across anything, and I expect to, I'll let you know, Inspector. Hello? Hello? Seven left, three right, and And all the way past zero to the right, to four, and then eleven to the left. Scarlet, you stole it. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, when are you going to start believing me? I told you, it's against the rules. What are you doing here? I came to help. Well, I don't want your help. You're not interested in finding the man who beat up Lisa? Well, I don't need you. Of course. You have the camera. May I remind you that it only works in the future, not in the past. The crime on Lisa has already been committed. And that's all you came here for? And to give you this snapshot. Remember the one I took in this office when you lent me the camera? Let me see it. Here it is. These are the guys. (laughs) Here they are. It's a perfect picture. Excuse me. Where are you going? I'm going to show it to Inspector Barrett. He'll be able to pick up these hoods in no time. Of course. And what do you tell him when he asks you where you got this picture? He'll be more determined than ever to get his hands on the camera. Well, then, why did you snap it? Wait a minute. You knew it was going to happen. Why didn't you warn her? Which question do you want answered? Both of them. Neither of them. Look, I don't know. I just want to do something. Johnny... Give me the camera. All right. Look, I'll make a deal with you. That's what I'm here for. Which two cameras of the Velecta line do you want? Yeah, you're pretty sharp, all right. I'll give you the camera for one million dollars. Sorry, Johnny. I can't make that deal. Why not? Because it's against the rules. I... I had to get a special concession even to be able to offer you two cameras. Believe me, Johnny. A mortal cannot profit by a mistake like the one that was made with your camera. So get out while you can. And let me have the camera. You know, you sound like a broken record. Well, haven't you had enough? Can't you understand now why this camera can bring only tragedy? Well, which question do you want answered? Oh, 
It's interesting that I find it much more difficult to do a good deed than an evil one. I'd like to know what makes you think you can pick out these mugs, Carlin. You've never even seen them. Yeah? Well, what have you got to lose, Inspector? Time. I could be showing these mug shots to your girl. She's the one who saw them. You looking for someone you know? I'm just looking for a couple of faces. I think... Wait a minute. Yep. Here you are. Here are your men. Joe Horn and Spence Vogel. Are you sure? I'm positive. How do you know? What happened since I saw you at the hospital? Will you stop asking questions and pick these guys up? What if you're wrong? I look like some kind of... I'm not wrong. I've got good news, Lisa. The doctor says you'll be able to go home in a couple of days. That's nice. Well, honey, you don't seem very happy. Johnny, what have you done about the camera? Isn't it great? They've caught the two guys who hurt you. So you've still got the camera. Look, Lisa. Hello. It's for you, Inspector Barrett. Barrett? How did he know I was here? Thank you. Hello? Carlin, I want you to meet me in your office as soon as possible. Well, why? What's up? I'll tell you when you get there. Be there. What did he want? Well, he, he, he wants me to meet him in my office as soon as possible. Johnny, please don't go. Oh, Lisa, why not? You just got here. Look, if I go now, I can finish with Barrett and get back and spend an hour or so with you before I get thrown out. <laughs> Inspector, I never really thanked you for getting those two guys. That's what I came about. <laughs> what, to get thanked? In a way. I want that camera. Hey, Inspector, look, you must be losing your marbles. I told now you... Now, listen one... to me, Carlin, and listen good. I put 16 years of my life into the police force, and they've just transferred me to Staten Island. Me. Inspector Barrett sent to... Well, you get the idea. I'm not sitting still for this transfer. I've got to have your little camera. Inspector, what good do you think the camera's going to do you? Oh, come off it, Carlin. I'm a cop. I've done every kind of police work from pounding a beat to undercover surveillance. And never have I heard of a guy who could predict crimes and name the criminals. And you can't either, Carlin. Oh, well, wait a minute. I never said I could. You can't. But you got some kind of newfangled device on that trick camera of yours, and I want it. It's going to make a big difference to my career. Look. Inspector, I'm sorry about the transfer, but, but it's upset you. Now, you're dreaming. You don't believe for a minute that I've got a gadget on a camera that can look into the future? That's just what I believe. It's the only thing that makes sense. All right. Now, suppose I prove it to you. How? I'll show you the camera. Fine. You look at the camera, and if you know anything about cameras, you'll see that it's a perfectly ordinary Felecta S60 with no extra gadgets on it. That's why you keep it in a safe. Here, Inspector. Look for yourself. You see? A plain Felecta. No gimmicks. Nothing. What did you leave in the safe? Nothing. Take a look. I will. All right. Now you're satisfied? No. I think I'll take a picture. Now, Inspector, you're being childish. What's your beef? I'll just... Now, now give me the camera. Look off, Colin. No, no, I... Come on, I said give Let me the... Go, the camera. Colin, come on. I, I want it. Yeah. I want you, Colin. Now, get up. On your feet. Colin. Colin. Good Lord. He's dead. Inspector, Inspector Barrett, uh, hold up a second. Who are you? Uh, Nick Scarlett. I'm a friend of Johnny's. Oh? He asked me to pick up his camera. I, uh, I see you're carrying it. I'll check with him. Oh, really? That won't be necessary. Look, I've never seen you before in my life. I know that this camera means a lot to Johnny. 
You don't expect me to hand it over to some stranger simply because you know Johnny and you ask for it. Inspector, you're in a better position than most people to know what happens to people who try to hang on to this camera. You'd be well advised to hand it over. You're the smoothest con man I ever met. Now get lost before I take you in for a loitering. Come in. Sit down. Make it fast, Barrett. What do you got? Commissioner, this camera is the greatest crime prevention device that's ever been invented. What? Barrett! Please, Commissioner, listen. You must know that I came up with the guys who stuck up the intercoastal bank and those mugs who beat up that girl in the office of the Carlin Detective Agency. I know that. I did it with this camera. Look, I'll prove it to you, Commissioner. I'm going to pull a picture out right now. Here. I'm going to pull it out... And lay it on your desk. Uh, that's not going to prove anything. Here, you, you just look at it. And then tell me what you think of this camera. Well, convinced? Yeah, yeah, you've convinced me, Barrett. Fancy, you and Sergeant White come on in here. I want to put Inspector Barrett under arrest. <laughs> arrest? Well, well, what's the charge? Murder one. According to this picture, you've killed this man in his office. What? Well, take a look. Picture's clear as a bell. That's you standing over what looks like a very dead man. I don't know how you got past my secretary. Ah, uh, my card, Commissioner. Uh, Nick Scarlett. Interpol? Yes, that's right. You see, Commissioner, we've been after that camera that Barrett handed you for the past two months. <laughs> oh, look, Mr. Scarlett, you're not going to tell me that Interpol was... Uh, the camera was used to smuggle heroin. Oh, yes. Very clever arrangement behind the shutters. Very clever. I'll give you a receipt and take it along, if you don't mind. No. No, not at all. Just as long as you leave me the picture that Barrett took when he was killing Johnny Carlin. Oh, Commissioner... That will be my pleasure. I often wonder where that camera is today. Sometimes I think that it may be used by St. Peter when an applicant stands at his gate demanding admission to heaven. Perhaps St. Peter pulls out a picture which would effectively silence a sinner who hadn't been caught by the law here on earth. Would you love to know the future? To be able to see exactly what's going to happen to you tomorrow, next week, next year? I hear a chorus of no's. It would be unbearable to know the exact date you're going to die or be mugged or be involved in a fatal accident. I agree. But I leave you with this. Why do so many people consult fortune tellers? Our cast included Nick Pryor, Terry Keene, Joan Lovejoy, Joseph Julian, and William Redfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time. Pleasant dreams. Theater program was furnished by the CBS Radio Network.